Hello everyone, you are welcome to the GMAT 41's YouTube channel. In our previous class, I taught you the concept or theory of domain, and I told you that the next time I meet you, we are going to look at how to evaluate the domain of a function. So in this video lesson, you are going to learn how to obtain the domain of different functions. We are going to start with polynomial functions. When you are given a polynomial function, how do you obtain the domain of that function? It would interest you to know that getting the domain of a polynomial function is quite a simple one. In fact, it happens to be the simplest form of domain that one can obtain. But what is a polynomial function? Generally, a function that is given us, let's say f of x equal to ax raised to power n plus bx raised to power n minus 1 plus cx raised to power n minus 2 plus, it continues in that order, you following right? Such expression is known as a polynomial expression. Now the powers n, n minus 1, n minus 2, in that order, they are not expected to be a fraction or a negative power. Simply put, the powers of the variables in the polynomial are expected to be a natural number. They are expected to be what? Natural number. From 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 in that order. Okay, so let us take our first question and see how we can obtain the domain of this polynomial function. Define y equal to f of x such that real number is mapped to real number. That's how we read this term here, okay? So we have to define y to be f of x such that f of x is a function in which real number is mapped to real number as f of x equal to 3x squared plus 5x minus 2. Then the domain of f of x is dash. We don't know. So in this problem, we have to find the domain of the function f of x. Take note that y is always called f of x. They mean the same thing, okay? Because y is dependent on another variable here, which in this case, it is dependent on x. So we have to find the domain of this function. Now if you look at this function, this function is a polynomial function. You can see 3x raised to the power 2 plus 5x, this is raised to the power 1, plus this is 2, this is 2x raised to the power 0, if you want to force x to enter. Now how do we obtain the domain of this function? Simply, please note, the domain of a polynomial function is real numbers. So always remember that. If you are given a polynomial, the domain of that polynomial is all real numbers. The reason for this is simple. Remember that a domain is said to be a real number, which if you substitute into the given function and you simplify that function, it is expected to also produce what? A real number. And if you look at this function given here, you notice that any real number in this world that you fix in for this x, once you simplify, f of x will also be a real number. And so the domain of a polynomial function simply is set of all real numbers. I think the most important thing here is for us to know how we quote the domain, how we write out the domain. So let us go. Straight ahead, domain. Now, I am going to express this in the various ways that one can quote the domain of this function. Remember we said it is set of all real numbers. So, if we choose to use this brace bracket, we can say that domain is equal to the set of elements x such that, are you there right? x is element of real numbers. Then you close. x is what? element of real numbers. Now you know, we don't know how many of our real numbers are. So we just represent it this form. It is not left for anybody who chooses to test. To pick any number in this world as a real number, 
fix here and then simplify to see if the answer is also going to be a real number. For example, if you fix 0 here, 3 times 0 raised to the power 2 is 0, times 3 is 0, fix 0 for x here, 5 times 0 is 0, 0 plus 0 is 0, 0 minus 2 will give us minus 2. So do you see you picked 0 as a real number, fixed it for x here, and you took note that it produced minus 2. Minus 2 is a real number. Therefore, the 0 you selected, which is a real number, produced another real number, which is minus 2. We can now conclude that 0 is part of the domain of this function. Why not pause the video and test another number? Select any other number, fix it here for value of x, simplify, and find out the answer you are going to get, that you would still get a real number. Try out one or two numbers, post your results in the comment section, that yes, these numbers you selected and fixed it for x actually produced another real number. All right, I'll show you one way you can quote this, or you can still decide to quote the domain as, now the set of real numbers are bounded by infinity in the negative and in the positive axis or direction. So we can actually write it as negative infinity comma to positive infinity. Now I want you to take note of the bracket I used here, curved bracket, curved bracket, then beginning with negative infinity, ending at positive infinity. With this curved bracket, what I am saying in essence is, if I begin from this negative infinity, with this curved bracket, this negative infinity is not among the domain. Of course, we know that infinity is not a real number, because we don't know what number is represented by that, okay? And then, uh, I closed the bracket with this curved bracket again at positive infinity, telling me that the, the, the element infinity, in this case, is not part of the domain. That is why I used the curved bracket. Therefore, we can simply say that the domain is all set of real numbers between negative infinity and positive infinity. The infinity is not part of the set of real numbers here. Are you following, right? That is the implication of this bracket. This and this are not part of the domain. All right, so using our bracket notation, this is just how we can quote the domain of this function. And please, dear friends, take note. This is true for all polynomial functions. So it's not something you go solving to obtain the domain of the polynomial function. Once you're given a polynomial function, the domain is simply set of all real numbers. Just know how you quote that domain, okay? If you are to express it using bracket notation okay all right we shall move on straight to our next question in our second question we are required to find the range of values of x in this function for which this function will be defined you can say that for what range of values of x is the function y equal to x cubed plus 2x defined now, I have decided to have this question presented in this form to tell you that in obtaining domain, the question can be presented such that you are asked to find the values of a given independent variable for which the whole function is defined. So this simply means you should find the domain of this function. What are the values of the independent variables, x, that will help you or that would give you real value as answer of y. And so, simply get a domain of this function. Once again, observe that this function is a polynomial function. Look at the variables here, the independent variable x, and you can see that it's bearing power. The power is positive. In this case, this is x raised to the power 3, and this is x raised to the power 1. In fact, we call this polynomial a polynomial of degree 3. The highest power of the variable x there is 3. Anyway, that is not our focus. We are asked to find the range of values of x that will make this function defined. And simply, we are going to obtain the domain. So, domain is equal to the set of elements x such that 
I've decided to use colon symbol, okay, to represent such that. It is still the same as that which we met in question one, slash. You can use it as slash sign or this colon sign. Such that x is element of real number. So this is just the answer. Or domain is equal to negative infinity, comma, positive infinity. So um, any number that is a real number which you select and fix in here for x, this function will be defined. That is to say, if you fix in that value of x here, which is the real number, you would get a real number as the answer, as the value of y. Remember, the value of y you are getting, the value of the function when you fix in x, that value you get is called the codomain. All right, so what we've just written here is telling us that this function will be defined for all values of x as real numbers. All right, friends, this is how we come to the end of evaluating the domain of a polynomial function. I hope you enjoyed the solution. Quite simple, you don't stress yourself. Once you know that this is a polynomial function, the domain is set of all real numbers. Please get used to how the domain is being quoted in bracket forms, okay? All right. We are going to deal with the domain of radical functions in our next class. Please like and subscribe to the GMAT 41 YouTube channel. If you have any question, please make use of the comment section. Drop your questions and I'll be right there to respond. Share our videos. Invite your friends. To subscribe to GMAT's 41's YouTube channel also. If you are in Oka and Anambra State, you may wish to join our tutorial classes. Contact the GMAT's 41. Okay? In the comment section, you'll see a WhatsApp link to contact GMAT's 41. If you are in Nnamdi Azikiwe University as a student, you can always contact us also to join our tutorial classes on campus for more educational tips. See you in our next class where I'm going to teach you the domain of radical functions.